The following is a special presentation from Pastor Joanne Ramsey and Speak the Word Ministries. We trust God's Word will bless you as you listen to this message. Here's Pastor Joe. I taught a message several years ago. As a matter of fact, one of the messages I taught several years ago was at the state prison in North Carolina. <laughs> and it was called Sin Crouches at the Door. And uh, the other one I did several years back called One More Night with the Frogs. <laughs> and believe it or not, I have taken these two messages uh, and I've combined them um, and have redone them. I, I have felt led to do this and because I think that most of the, these messages are talking about obedience. And, and obedience in Christ and being a follower of Christ is, the, is number Love is number one, you gotta, and you've got to be obedient. And of course, you can't have love if you don't have obedience. So they all go together. In uh, Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 in the Berean Bible, it says that God asked Cain, he said, Why are you angry, said the Lord to Cain, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do what is right, he said in verse 7, you will, not, will you not be accepted? But if you refuse to do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. He said it desires you, but you must master it. In Romans 6, 12, it says, Do not let sin control the way that you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. And it says in verse 14 that sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Indeed, he says, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Thank you, Lord. And I think we sometimes, we get caught up so much in the flesh, and we don't need to be in the flesh. We need to be in the spirit, you know. And, and the enemy is always uh, trying to trap us. He's always tempting us. And, 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 and some of these things can go on for weeks or months or years. But as David was saying today, as long as we give in and, and allow the flesh to rule us, he's going to con as long as we're giving him a, a foothold, he's going to continue to tempt you and to, and to beat on you in those same areas. And sometimes it's really hard to let go of some things, you know, whether it's forgiveness or whatever, or, or um, pride, forgiveness. Whatever, sometimes it's just hard to just turn loose and let it go. But this is what God told Cain when he didn't do as the Lord had asked him. And as I said before, I'm talking about obedience tonight and how when you are walking in disobedience, you're leaving the door open for the enemy to come in. And the way you keep that door closed is by obedience. And one of the ways to fulfill that is obedience is to do, to fulfill it is to do what God tells us to do. Or sin will be crouching at your door. Because Satan is always looking for access. He's always looking for a way in. And, you know, and, and, and he sets you up. I was thinking this afternoon as I was getting dressed. He's been setting me up for days. He set me up again today. You know, I look at something and I shouldn't have looked at that. You know, I mean, it wasn't anything ugly or anything. But it was something that the, the devil's been telling me these things, you know. And he knows it's... It, he knows it pushes my button. You know, there's some things or some people just push your button. <laughs> and, and the enemy knows who these people are and he knows what they can say and do that will push your button. And, and so the enemy knows this. And so he does something to push that button so that he can get you to saying things that you shouldn't be saying and feeling things in your heart and your spirit that you shouldn't be feeling. You know, it, it doesn't take long to get out of love. No, that's true. You get your button pushed real fast. You know, and I'll tell you what, I do a lot of repenting on that. I mean, <laughs> as a matter of fact, just repent. I think that one of the things I was thinking this morning is David and I was praying and after we had prayed and we were just praising the Lord and just praising him and quoting scriptures and stuff is that I was thinking about um, how the Lord healed. You know, we were talking about forgiveness because then I realized, well, we need to pray for that too. If there be any unforgiveness in us, we need to repent of that too when you're praying for healing or whatever. You know, especially your healing. And I remember the, you know, the man that was laying on the thing, you know, and uh, he told him that, you know, he could, you know, get up off his mat and go. You know, he's for, you know, your sins are forgiven. You know, get up and go. And they said, well, who are you, you know, asking Jesus who he was to say that, you know, that he could, you know, forgive him his sins. And, and so I was thinking today, you know, that, that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So he hasn't changed. And, and so I was thinking, well, Lord, I thank you 
that there's no difference in forgiveness and healing because you said so. You said, there, what difference is there? What difference is there between me telling him he's forgiven and to get up? They're all, they're one and the same. And so that's when I thought, well, I need to maybe repent. <laughs> I didn't know if I'd done anything, but you don't have to know you've done anything because a lot of times we do things or even have thoughts that we don't even know we've had that goes against the word of God. And so we need to repent to make sure, just to clear the path, just to make sure. And as I said before, I have joined these two together to point out how being disobedient and stubborn will cause you much pain and much heartache. But I've joined these two messages together because it, it, it uh, talks about you know, the disobedience and the stubborn and how being disobedient and how being stubborn will cause you a lot of heartache that's not necessary. And it all can be eliminated simply by doing as the Lord has instructed in his word. We see how Pharaoh and his people suffered so much because of Pharaoh's stubbornness. We see this in Exodus 4. And as we go further along, I want you to notice how there was no plagues, that the, where no plagues where the Israelites were, were in Goshen, how they, that none of these affected them. None of the Israelites or the animals were hurt. And saints, if you don't think, if you don't, if you don't think God can protect you, you need to go back. And you need to read his word on how he protected his people over and over again. And also how he has protected you over and over and over again. And like I said before, he is the same God now as he was then. And Malachi says he changes not. As a matter of fact, Malachi 3, 6 says, For I am the Lord, and I change not. Praise God, I'm so thankful that he doesn't. I believe that God must have had a wall of protection around the Israelites during all these plagues. And we're going to be getting into that a little bit later on here. But in Exodus 8, 9 through 10, is when Pharaoh wanted Moses to get rid of the frogs. Moses told Pharaoh, he said, you set the time, and then you will be rid of the frogs. And, and we're going to be talking about a little bit more about this in, further on in the message, but I'm just kind of laying the foundation here right now to get you in the mood <laughs> and the frame of mind that we're going to be talking about frogs tonight. <laughs> and one of the things... But it says here that when Moses told Pharaoh to set the time as to when he wanted him to get rid of the frogs, what was Pharaoh's response? Does any of you remember? One more night. Do it tomorrow. Tomorrow. Do it tomorrow. Think about that. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians had frogs everywhere. They had them in their beds. They had them in their stoves. They had them in their clothes. They had them in their shoes. They had frogs everywhere. They were walking on frogs. And that is one of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight. But let me ask you this. How many more days or weeks or months are you willing to put up with some of the things in your life? Like sickness in your body? Or how long are you willing to put up with not having enough to meet your financial needs? Or just barely getting along? How long, saints, before you begin speaking up? How long is it going to be before you take authority and talk to your mountain? You should be aware of this. You need to be careful that what you say because your problems has ears. Right. Both ways and has ears. And words matter a lot more than people realize. How long is it going to be before you put Satan in his place? And his place really is under your feet. Yeah. Jesus said to leave no place for the devil. Some translation says no foothold or opportunity. And that was another one of the things that I was confessing this morning. I said, Jesus, I thank you that you said Satan has no place in you. And he has no place in me. Because right. if he doesn't have any place in Jesus, he does not have any place in any of you in here if you're born again. Right. And so you need to confess that because Jesus said, as he is, so are you here on this earth. Right. So what does not affect him does not have to affect you. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'd like to begin tonight in Exodus 8, 9 through 10, Amplified Bible. This is where Moses is talking to Pharaoh about getting rid of the frogs. We know that there were 10 plagues altogether brought on Egypt in the book of Exodus. The plague of the frogs was the plague number three. And that's the one that we're going to be focusing on here tonight. In Exodus verse 8, Moses told Pharaoh, he said, set the time. We just talked about that. Tell me when you want me to pray for you and your officials and your people, then you and your houses will be rid of the frogs, and they will all remain in the river. Now listen again to Pharaoh's answer. Pharaoh had been begging, 
and Pharaoh had been pleading with Moses to get rid of the frogs. So you would have thought that he would want them to go right now. But that's not so. And like I said, how many of you listening in here tonight or online did not go to God today or yesterday or the day before, but have continued to put up with the stuff in your life? Some of you maybe for years, like me. I've got some things that I've been putting up with for years. I don't know of anybody in here that hasn't gotten something that they've been putting up with, whether it's for weeks or months or years. You keep, you keep putting up with it. Pharaoh's answer was, do it tomorrow. All right, Moses replied, it will be as you have said, and then you will know that there is no one like the Lord our God. Hallelujah. If you will, I want you to please go with me if you got your Bibles to Exodus 8. We're going to read some scriptures, verses 1 through 15, coming from the Amplified Bible. I realize it's a lot of verses, but I think we need to read them all so that you can get the whole picture, okay? And Father, I thank you for the, uh, ask you to bless another reading of this word as we go through it, Lord. And please let them see, Lord, what you want them to see as we're reading these scriptures and as we continue on with this word. Thank you, Lord. In verse 1, it said, Then Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Friends, remember, this is the third plague. Pharaoh had already refused twice to let God's people go. In verse 2 it says, And if you, refuse, if you refuse to let them go, talking about Pharaoh, he said, Behold, I will smite your entire land with frogs, and the river shall swarm with frogs, which shall go up and come into the house, into your house, into your bed chambers, and on your bed, and into your ovens, your kneading bowls, and your dough. And the frogs shall come up upon you, and on your people, and all your servants. Verse 5 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your hand with your rod over the rivers, the streams, and the canals, and over the pools, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. And this is another thing, you know, we should never tell the Lord when he asks us to do something that we can't do it. And the only reason why Aaron was the one that was saying this was to Pharaoh is because Moses, if you read back a couple of chapters earlier, you will see that God told Moses that he was going to let him go in and speak to Pharaoh, but, uh, but Moses told God he couldn't do it. He said, I can't do it. I can't talk. I just stutter. I do this. And maybe he was afraid to go back into Egypt too, you know, because that's where he had escaped from. But God was telling him to go in, and he told Moses that he was going to be a god to Pharaoh. And, and, but he said he couldn't talk. So he said, okay, we'll appoint Aaron to be your prophet, and will him do the speaking for you. But we should never tell God that we can't do something if he tells us that we can. Because even there, maybe there's lots of ways that we think we can't do it. God probably knows even ways that we don't know why we think we can't do it. But we can do it. If God says you can do it, you can do it. And verse 6, So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land. Hallelujah. I brought... I love visuals. I got frogs. I got frogs. And it says, so Aaron stretched out his hand and, and water and the frogs was everywhere. Frogs everywhere. Frogs everywhere. Just everywhere. There was frogs everywhere. People was walking on the frogs. They just got frogs. Everywhere there was frogs. In their bed chambers. In their food. In their shoes. There was frogs. Everywhere. There was frogs. And I done gave out all my frogs. <laughs> but in verse 7 said the musician did the same thing. With their enchantments and secret arts, they brought up more frogs upon the land. So not only when Aaron raised up his rod, like the God told him to do, all these frogs came upon, came upon them. Then the uh, musicians did the same thing, which I thought was really dumb. 
because now they got more frogs. They got frogs everywhere. Uh, you know, it, it, it just amazes me. And it says in verse 8, it said, Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and begged and pleaded, pleaded with the Lord to take these frogs away from me and my people. He said, I will let your people go so they could offer sacrifices to the Lord. Saints, Pharaoh begged and he pleaded with Moses to ask the Lord to get rid of the frogs so that you will have, and so you, like I said, you would have thought that he would wanted them to go now. But we know in verse 10, that's not true. In verse 9, Moses said to Pharaoh, Glory over me in this dictate when I shall pray to the Lord for you, your servants and your people, that the frogs may be destroyed from you and your houses and remain only in the river. And Pharaoh said, Tomorrow. Tomorrow. God, I've been suffering with these migraines for 10 years now. Pastor Larry comes and prays for me. He said, Joe, do you want me to pray for you? And we can get rid of these headaches? How about next week? I really don't have time today. You know, we don't have time for the Lord. You know, we really don't. We only come to the Lord when we want something. True. Yeah. Just like children with parents. We're God's sheep, His children. And I can understand why He calls us sheep. Because we wander around like we don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. Sheep don't know anything. I mean, they just wander all over the place. But we have a shepherd. Yes, amen. A good shepherd. Yes. That watches over us. Yes. That loves us that cares for us, that wants us to be healthy. He don't want us to have frogs in our lives. He don't want us to have sickness in our lives. He don't want us to be suffering in our finances and not having enough to get along. All the stuff that God has put on this earth has been for us, not for the devil's children, but for his children. But we won't take a hold of it and claim it. We keep putting up with the frogs in our lives. So how long are we going to continue to put up with these frogs, regardless of what it is? There's, there, you know, only you know what your personal frogs are. I, don't, I know what my frogs are. I might have two or three frogs that you've been walking on. You know, But maybe I pray a little prayer, but then I'm not faithful to follow up. You have to continue until you get results. You can't grow weary. The Bible says don't grow weary. Hallelujah. Moses says, let it be as you say, that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. Hallelujah. And the frogs shall depart from you and your houses and from your servants and your people. They shall remain in the river only. In verse 12, so, so Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh and Moses cried to the Lord as he agreed with Pharaoh concerning the frogs which he had brought against him. And verse 10 said, And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. Because like I said before, we know that God told Moses that he was going to be like a God to Pharaoh. And it says, And the frogs died out of the houses and out of the courtyards and the villages and out of the fields. Hallelujah. And, uh, and so I'm going to later on after the service, the kids can come in and pick up the frogs. <laughs> you know, the Lord said we should be like children, right? <laughs> They're going to come pick up the frogs. But saints, we know from the rest of the scriptures that Pharaoh's heart was hardened again and a lot more plagues were brought on Egypt until the last plague that took his son. Sometimes we have to lose something or someone so precious to us before we're willing to listen. Think about that. And I know that you have probably been wondering how anyone can be so stubborn how can anyone be so stubborn to the point of even endangering their own son? Well, saints, we could ask ourselves that same question tonight. How can we be so stubborn? We all could just take a good look in the mirror. And for all of us, for all of us have put up with things that we didn't have to be putting up with. When all we had to do was take it to the Lord and then do as his word tells us to do, but most of us will not will want to do it our way. We don't want to do it God's way. In 1 Peter 5, 7, in the Easy Read Bible, says, Cast all your worries to Him because He cares for you. 
And verse 8 says, control yourselves and be careful. The devil is your enemy. And he goes around like a roaring lion looking for someone to attack to eat. Know this, your neighbor is not your enemy. Your pastor is not your enemy. Your friends, your boss is not your enemy. And, and the Satan is not the lion. He's like a roaring lion. Jesus is the lion of Judah. He is the good shepherd. He's the one that's watching over his flock day and night. Matthew 6, 27, it says, And who of you, by being worried, can add one single hour to his life? We worry, 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 worry. You know, and, and I know this is an old phrase, but I've heard it so many times, you know, it's like, like, like being in a rocking chair, rocking, rocking, not going anywhere, or like that little hamster, you know, in the cage, you go round and round and round and round but never gets anywhere. <laughs> I don't want to be that way. I don't, I, I don't want to be that way anymore. But you know, there are people in here tonight that are sick, and the only thing that could be, and I'm, I'm only saying it could be, I'm not saying that it is, I'm just saying it could be, standing between you and receiving your healing is forgiving someone. And again, it could be that all you need to do is to take hold of God's promises and start speaking them over your body or over your finances and stop agreeing with the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. And you might be thinking, well, Pastor Joe, I have been sick for so long and I have been praying and believing God for healing for so long. Or you may be saying, well, I've been looking for a job that will meet your financial needs, one that offers better working conditions, and you may have given up hope. You might even think it's hopeless. But God says it's not hopeless. He says all things are possible with him. Amen. And who else did he say it's all things are possible with? Him that believes. Yeah. All things are possible. You have to believe. Yeah. And you may have given up hope. And like I said, you might think it's hopeless. You know, Saints Pharaoh could have had the frogs gone right then and there that very night. He didn't have to spend one more night with those wet, slimy frogs <laughs> in his bed in his food, in his clothes, and in his shoes. It was Pharaoh's decision, not God's decision, to wait until tomorrow and, and not God, you know, like I say, it was not God's decision. It was, my, it was not God's decision that I stay home tonight. It was the en enemy wanting me to stay, but it was my decision as whether or not I was going to exercise the God-given authority that he has given me now, God says that you take your authority. He's given you the power. He's given you the authority. He's given us everything that he needs. He says when we release our authority, according, I think it's in Matthew, that when we release our authority and our power, he, Jesus releases his ability. And just as he worked through the disciples, he works through us the same way. Amen. I also reminded him of that this morning. I love reminding God of his promises because he tells us that. And that's in my message that he says, you know, to put him in remembrance of what he says. And so when he tells to me to put him in remembrance, that means to remind him. And so I kept reminding him of all the scriptures I could think of this morning. And I'm telling you, when you're so sick, you want to throw up and you can't stand up. You can't hardly think of a lot of scriptures. But you can always think of some and you just keep, keep glorifying the Lord. You just keep praising him and praising him and praising him and just telling him how much he's worthy to be praised and how much you're worshiping him and how, how much he deserves to be honored and how he deserves your praise. Yes. And you can't just, like I said, you can't sit still like a pumpkin. Yes. You got to move. That's right. That's right. Amen. You know, and, and I'm not saying, you know, the enemy gets in and he attacks me, attacks you. But we don't have to put up with it. That's right. Amen. We, our flesh wants to put up with it. That's true. That's true. But God don't want us to put up with it. And so even when you don't feel like it, and most time you don't feel like it. <laughs> Can I see a hand of all those in here to get say you don't feel like praying? <laughs> I don't. But I'm so thankful that I can pray a little bit and I can get somebody to pray for me. Yeah. Pray with me. <laughs> Stand with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just so excited to be here tonight. 
I'm, I'm really so excited. I know yesterday I went shopping with a friend, and she doesn't know this, but when we were in mazes, she was shopping, and, and every chance I got, I was looking for a table to sit down on. <laughs> you know? But I, I, I had to get out. I wanted to get out. I haven't been out in a long time, and I wanted to get out, and so I was determined I was going to get out. But as I continued on, with our little trip, I got stronger and got better. And so by the time I went home, I was fine. You know, sometimes you just got to force yourself sometimes to keep, keep moving forward, you know. And so that's, like I said, I'm so excited. I just can't tell you how excited I am to be here today. Uh, <laughs> I, re I just thought I'd be right into bed, not calling the pastor to come by the house, you know. And just <laughs> And I'm here, so I'm just really excited for the goodness of God. And I'm so excited that he's so anxious to, to love and I'm so anxious to heal us and, and, and so thankful. And will I behave the next time the same way? I don't know. We don't ever know what we're going to do the next time that the enemy attacks us. We don't know. But I know that the more you practice, the better you get, no matter what it is you're doing. So the more you practice putting the devil in his place, the better you're going to get at it. Are you hearing me? It's not God's desire that his children do without. It is the exact opposite. God wants to bless you. And not only does he want to bless you, but he wants the world to see him blessing you. He wants to bless you and wants everybody else to see how you're being blessed. In Psalms 31, 19 in New Living Bible, it says, How great is the goodness you have stored up to those who fear you. He says, you lavish it on those who come to you for protection, blessing them before the watching world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, you know, you have to know, saints, that there is nothing hopeless with God, and you don't have to wait until tomorrow. You don't have to wait any longer. You don't even have to wait not one second longer, for he is the God that calls those things that be not. He said, even the dead things. This is what the scripture means when God told Abraham, he said, I have made you a father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life, according to Romans 4, 17, and who creates new things out of nothing. God will create new things out of nothing. He'll create new limbs, uh, new hearts, uh, new livers. Anything that needs to be created, God can create. He, he, he's the one that created this to begin with. And, and we have any, if you have a, a, a car and a part goes wrong with it, you take it back to the one that made it That's right. to get it repaired. They've got extra parts. Well, apparently God has extra parts up there. Because if you need something, he, he's got them. Are you hearing me? You know from Scripture that Abraham's body was pretty dead at 100 years old, and so was his wife Sarah. You know, Abraham was not married to some young sweet thing. You know, his wife's womb was dead, and she was old, and he was old. You know, some, there's nothing wrong if somebody older wants to marry a young, sweet thing, but Abraham did not, was not married to a young, sweet thing. You know, so it was even more impossible. It probably wouldn't have been so impossible the other way around. I don't know, but who knows? <laughs> we better not go any further on that. But... <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You, you're all right, Lord. <laughs> hallelujah. It says in verse 18 that even when there was no reason to hope, Abraham kept hoping. Abraham kept believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants, he says, that you're going to have. In verse 21, he says he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Hallelujah. And that's where we have to be tonight, saints. Fully convinced, in spite of what things may look like in the natural in your life tonight, whatever they might look like in the natural, you have to be convinced that the God you serve is more than able, more than able Hallelujah. to do what he said he would do. Right. He is Jehovah Jireh. He, the God that provides. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals or restores. And these are only a couple of God's names that reveals his character. Yeah. He has many names that reveals his character. Yeah. 
This is what the Lord was doing with the Israelites in Egypt. They had been in captivity for over 400 years. And they had lost faith in the God of their fathers. They all believed God existed as well as all of you do. And so many say that they do. But they doubted that he could or would break the yoke of bondages. And brothers and sisters, let me stop here and say this. I'm going to have a prayer line after the service. And I want you to know that if you're in bondage in any of these areas with your health, your finances, and you feel like they're, you're, they're being blocked by some unknown force or spirit, I will pray and God will break these chains. God has not changed since. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, according to Hebrews 13, 8. And he is here tonight to help you, to free you from any kind of stronghold. We can pray. Other pastors are here, pray. Don't have to wait till tomorrow. Amen. Don't have to wait another day. Amen. Praise God. Isaiah 10, 27 says, In that day, the Lord will end the bondage. He will break the yoke of slavery and lift it from your shoulders. So he's here tonight to break any bondage. And he will break the yoke of any slavery that you've been enslaved to, that the enemy has enslaved you. Tonight can be that day when your bondages get broken. It's, it's up to you. It's not up to God. A lot of people think it's up to God. It's not up to him. It's up to you. And if you have faith to receive what he wants to give you. The anointing breaks the yoke. Yes. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, Yahweh. You just need to come up expecting to be set free. It's the law of expectation because you will normally get what you're expecting to get. Are you hearing me? You will get what you're expecting. And you need to have a spirit of determination. You need to be determined that you will not give in to Satan's attacks. And don't cast away your confidence. Amen. That You know, I, I pray about that a lot because sometimes I feel like I'm not as confident as I'd like to be. And I'm sure that some of you are the same way when God gives you something to do. But I will, I will make an effort. Confident or no confidence. Because I know I'm not up here by myself. Amen. Amen. I know that God was in my house. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, he was there last week too. Amen. And a week before. Amen. And actually, he's going to be there every day, really. Amen. He's there every day. Hallelujah. He's every day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know that symptoms will hang around as long as they think that you're going to give up. But when they realize you're not going to give up, they will leave. What I'm saying here, as long as Satan knows that you're going to bow your knee to him and stay sick or stay broke or stay whatever, he's going to keep hanging around and he's going to keep bringing these thoughts in your mind and he's going to keep telling you what you can't do and there's no cure for this so you'll never get that job or, you know on and on and on he's going to go Satan is a bully and the only thing a bully responds to is brute force and the Holy Spirit will provide that brute force Amen. are you hearing me? Amen. the Holy Spirit will provide that brute force that you need Matthew eleven twelve, 12, it says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Through the Holy Spirit. Saints, the answer is not in, the answer is not in my might or power, but the Lord God Almighty himself, according to Zechariah 4, 6. The word might means strength, wealth, or force. The word for power refers to human ability. The plagues, the plagues were ten disasters sent upon Egypt by God to convince Pharaoh to free the Israelite slaves from the bondage and the oppression that they had endured for over 400 years. This was to serve for two purposes. It was to show the Israelites that the God of their fathers was alive even after the 400 years and, and worthy of their worship. Amen. And also to show the Egyptians that their gods were nothing. And I believe he accomplished those two things. Amen. Hallelujah. When God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel from bondage in Egypt, God promised to show his wonders as confirmation of Moses' authority. Hallelujah. 
Brothers and sisters, God has made promises to you and me. He has also given us the authority to claim those promises. All of his promises, according to First, uh, 2 Corinthians one twenty, are in him, yes, and amen. He is no less powerful today than he was in Pharaoh's day. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not, and I know I've repeated that several times, and I do it on purpose. I want you to understand that the God we serve in now is the same God that was back there in the Pharaoh's day that was Moses, is the same God that brought those plagues, the same God that delivered them, delivered the children of uh, Israelites and opened up the Red Sea and brought them across on dry land is the same God that we serve today. Hallelujah. No, nothing has changed. No, the only one thing's changed is us, but he has not changed. We change by, we, we are wishy-washy. That's why we're called sheep, wishy-washy back and forth. But God never changes. And I was thanking God today. I said, God, I'm so thankful today that you're always faithful, even when I'm unfaithful. Even when I'm not faithful, you're faithful. Because we're not always faithful. I don't care how spiritual we are. We're not always faithful. We want to be, but we're not always. Not because we don't want to be. It's kind of like Paul in Romans 7, you know? Sometimes you do the things you don't want to do. You know? But I like to... Chapter 8, you know, we get into grace. <laughs> I like the new covenant that God made with us. <laughs> that we're no longer living under the law, but we're living under grace. Praise God. Thank you. Jesus. We have it so much better than they did. I mean, there's no comparison to the way we live now. He's inside of us, and I reminded him of that, Pastor Larry. And the Spirit of God, I said, you live in me. The, the Spirit of God lives in me, you know, always, you know, right here. And my body is the temple of the living God, you know. And it's, it, you know, like I said, you just do whatever the Holy Spirit brings to your mind. It's not the same for everybody. God is always the same. But circumstances can differ, you know. Hallelujah. He is no less powerful today than he was in Pharaoh's day, as I said. Friends, you need to realize that whatever that thing is in your life that you thought was dead and that you thought was hopeless is not hopeless I want you to get a revelation tonight that God can resurrect anything and there's nothing that God cannot resurrect or no bondage that he cannot break. He's the God of the impossible abilities. But the way he does it is with his word, saints. Let me repeat that. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, that God cannot resurrect. As far as God is concerned, it's not dead until he says it's dead. Are you hearing me? Yes. It's not over until God says it's over. That's right. That's right. It's not over. By taking God's word and speaking it over your circumstances or directing his word at your mountains. Hallelujah. Jesus showed us how to do this in Mark eleven twenty three when he spoke to the fig tree. And speaking is how you're going to bring those dead things back to life. You're going to have to open your mouth. But by speaking... And agreeing with the word of God and praising the Lord, you have to stop letting the devil keep putting sickness on your body and you have to stop him from stealing your money. Are you hearing me? You're the one that's doing without. It's you. It's up to you. It's your decision. Think of the frogs. Take a frog home with you tonight. As a reminder that you don't have to put up with whatever's going on in your life. You don't have to put up with it one more day That's right. or one more minute. Amen. So take them as a reminder. I'm going to take mine. I got the biggest one. <laughs> uh, the preacher always gets the best, right? So <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. You're going to have to use your tongue and cut him into ribbons with it. That's what David and I were doing this morning. We were using our tongue to cut him into ribbons. And after he got to leave, he's got to leave. You have to be like David was with Goliath and you got to be bold and you got to say, what? who does this uncircumcised Philistine think he is? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway? In 1 Samuel 17, verse 32, David told King, uh, told King Saul, he said, don't you worry about this Philistine. He said, I'll go fight him. And King Saul replied, don't be ridiculous. 
There was no way that you can fight this Philistine and win. You're, you're just a boy. You know, it was believed that uh, David was probably around 17 or 18 at the time. I don't know for sure, but that's what they say. In other words, the devil might say to you saints tonight that there's no way that you're going to be healed. They don't even have a cure for it, as I just said. They don't even have a cure for what you have. Or the devil might be telling you tonight that there's no way that you're going to get out of debt, that you're never going to get ahead, that you were born poor and you're going to die poor. He's told me a lot of things that I ain't got time to preach tonight. Mm -hmm. But he's a liar. Yes, he is. And I made a liar out of him for the last 20 some years. Because I'm standing up here today. And he never thought I would be here. <laughs> you know, you've got more inside of you than you think you got. Yeah. We just have to use it and trust the one that's inside of us to get us to where he wants us to go. And when the Lord speaks to you, write it down. Mark it down. And as Donna was prophesying tonight, take heed when God speaks. Don't take it lightly. When God speaks, whoever he's speaking for her, Apostle Larry, whoever he's speaking through, take heed. Heed the word of God. Take it for yourself. I claim it, what she was saying. Yeah. You, know, you, you know, because there are obstacles in the way. But there's none that we can't conquer. That's right. As long as we got God on our side, there's nothing we can't do. He said, if I be for you, who can be against you? Right. And God is on our side. Yes. He does have our backs, Amen. our sides and our fronts. <laughs> Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know... Just because you were born some way doesn't mean you got to stay that way. Amen. I, was, I was born a country girl on the farm, you know, that wore shoes with holes in them with socks that had to be turned under and come out at the hole, you know, and I walked and everybody thought I was crippled when I walked because I'd slide my foot so people couldn't see the sock coming out of the bottom of my shoe. But you know, it doesn't matter where you're born and who you're born to. It's up to you. Because every individual to God, to God, everyone is an individual created in his image and his likeness. And he's created each and every one of us for a purpose. Maybe it's not to preach. Maybe it's not to sing. Maybe it's not to do this or that and the other. But he's created you for a purpose. He did not put anybody here on this earth without a purpose. And all you have to do is seek him and ask him what that purpose is. Amen. And listen, and he'll tell you what it is. He told me. And it took a while, but he'll, he'll tell you. And he won't give you everything at once. Praise God, he don't give you everything at once. Yeah. Hallelujah. And this is where you do like David. When, when, he starts, when he starts telling you all this stuff, you're going to have to pull out your slingshot. Like David did. Your slingshot is your tongue. And you begin firing away. And that's what I did today. And that's what I did. Last, you know, we do a lot. I do it a lot. Remember what I said. Your words matter more than you know. You say, devil, you are a liar. My God sent his word and has healed me and delivered me from all destruction, according to Psalms 107.20. And that was my confession a week ago, and that was my confession this morning. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals me. He sent his word and removed all sickness and destruction from my body. So if he sent his word and removed all sickness and, from, and disease and destruction from my body, then why am I putting up with it? Why do I just stay there and wallow in it? Because that's what I wanted to do, to be honest. But I'm learning more every day. I, I'm not arrived, never will. But I'm learning more every day that you've got to fight for what you want. You've got to fight for your health. You've got to fight for your family. You've got to fight for your, your finances, your job. You cannot let the devil continue to steal these things away from you. Yeah. It's really up to you. You confess... The Jehovah Jireh is my provider. The young lions do, do not like and suffer hunger, but they seek the Lord. But those that seek the Lord shall not like for any good thing, the Bible says in Psalm 34, 10. You let your words begin to create. God's word has the power to change anything. God is omnipotent, and that means God is all-powerful. He spoke things into being. Every cell and every breath and every thought are sustained by him. Praise the Lord. Things, there is, nothing, there is nothing too difficult for our God. 
And that's my point, and I want you to get that. There is nothing too difficult for the God that we serve. You give the devil everything you got. You let him have it with both barrels. Don't ever be in agreement with your circumstances, friends. But you have to be in agreement with God's word. Your mouth is that slingshot, and I hope that you're hearing me, because this really is where it is. This will deliver you out of poverty. This will deliver you out of uh, sickness. This will deliver your family. This will deliver you from everything. This is your weapon. This is your slingshot. Saul said to David, Goliath has been a man of war since his youth. In 1 Samuel verse 34 through 37 in the Message Bible says, David begins to tell Saul all about the, his past victories. David said, I've been a shepherd, tending sheep from my father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lion, uh, lamb from the flock, he said, I'd go after it. He said, I'd knock it down. I'd rescue the lamb. And if it turned on me, I'd grab it by the throat. I'd wring its neck and I'd kill it. <laughs> he said, lion or bear. He said, it didn't make no difference. He said, I killed it. Hallelujah. And I'll do the same to this Philistine pig who is taunting the troops of God alive. God who delivered me from the teeth of the lion and the claws of the bear will deliver me from this Philistine. So Saul said, okay, go and may God be with you. It says in verse 44 that Goliath ridiculed David. He said, am I a dog that you come after me with a stick? And he cursed David by his gods. In verse 44, Goliath says, come on. He says, I'm going to make roadkill of you for the buzzards. I'm going to turn you into a tasty morsel for the field mice. And David said, you come at me with a sword and a spear and a battle axe. He says, but I come in the name of the God of Israel. We come in the name of the God of Israel. I believe that God gave David the same strength that he did for Samson. Think about it. He had to have supernatural strength to kill a bear and a lion with his bare hands. Think about the size and the strength of a bear. And he's just a boy. Or the lion or the bear. God had to give him supernatural strength like Samson. He could just pick up anything. And I believe that when you're fighting the devil, that God can give us supernatural strength. He can give us supernatural strength and he can give us supernatural wisdom and ability to fight that fight. Whatever we need to do, he can give us that strength to do it. I believe that. David told Goliath, he said, I'm going to kill you. He said, I'm going to cut. Now, see what he's doing here. He's confessing. He's declaring and confessing what he's going to do before he did it. He said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to cut off your head. And I'm going to serve it up your body to the crows and the coyotes. The whole earth will know that there, there's a God in Israel where the battle belongs to God. You know, and that's what you have to do. You have to tell the devil what you're going to do to him. And he's handing, and he says, and he's handing you to us on a platter. Hallelujah. And God has not changed. He will give you your enemy on a platter too. Saints, when Goliath was huffing and a puffing, he was really trying to put fear into David. That's the tactic that, that the devil uses on you and me all the time. For he knows if he can get you into fear, that he's going to win. So he uses intimidation. You have to know who you are in Christ. You have to keep your enemy on the move and keep swinging your sword, according to Ephesians six seventeen. You can't just stand there with your mouth closed. When I think about standing there, I think about someone playing tennis or something where they have to be on the move or and hit something. For example, you can't just hold the tennis racket. You have to hit the ball over the net and you gotta keep moving. I never played tennis. My daughter plays tennis, but I played racquetball and I couldn't get anywhere by standing still, saints. As a matter of fact, you had to keep moving. I think that a target on the move is hard to hit. But you, I had to keep moving. I had to keep hitting that ball and sometimes the ball would hit me. But actually, a racquetball could be a dangerous game because you're in this little room with four walls with either two to four other people swinging their rackets, and you have to move fast if you want to win and not get beat up. In closing, let me say this. Some of you have given up hope tonight of ever being healed or ever having enough to meet your financial needs. But I'm telling you, you don't have to spend one more night with those wet, slimy frogs. Frogs, frogs. 
in Isaiah 43, uh, 26, it said, God tells you to put him in remembrance of what he said. He said, let us plead together, declare thou that they may be justified. And as I said before, what does God mean, saints, when he says, put me in remembrance? In other words, he is saying, remind me. Now, when God tells you to remind him of something, remember what I said, you need to remind him. That's what I was doing today. Most of the day is reminding him. What I'm saying is, I'm saying you need to start confessing what he said about your health, how, about how by his stripes that you were healed and not going to be, and how you're not going to be healed, but you're already healed. You need to confess what he said about your provision. For the Lord is your, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. And my God will, he said, my Lord will give grace and glory and no good thing, he said, will he withhold from those that walk upright in integrity. O oh, Lord of hosts, how blessed is the man who trusts in you. How blessed is the man that trusts in you. I pray tonight that if any of you out there have been spending more nights with the frogs than you want to, whatever it is, you really don't have to anymore. You really you don't. I'm not going to, you know, it can, go, it can go away right away. But sometimes the enemy will bring it back. He'll test you. He tests your faith and, and what you're standing what you're standing up to do. So, I uh, like I said, you know, it's it's, uh, it's it's been an ongoing battle. Sometimes battles takes a while, but you can't give up because God only knows Himself what would, what would happen to you if you gave up. Yeah. So you can't give up. You can't give in. You got to keep fighting as long as you got strength left in you, and God will fight for you. And like I said, you know, some of you might have been putting up with things longer than you want to. And I do know I'm learning more and more every day that I'm tired of putting up with things, and I don't want to put up with them anymore. I'm not saying it might not take a while. You know, sometimes it takes a little while, but don't get discouraged if if you have to continue to confess the word. If you have to continue to fight your battles, fight. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. God is with you. He, he's right by your side. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. And like I said, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here tonight. So he, he's your breath. He's every breath that you breathe. And he's watching over you, everything that you do. God, I thank you. I thank you for this word tonight. I'm still so excited and I'm so happy to be here tonight in your presence. And I'm so thankful, Holy Spirit, that you're my teacher and my helper and my guide. And I thank you, Father God, for all of those that are listening online tonight. I thank you, God, for all of those that come to hear and be fed on your word tonight. And I pray, Father God, that they'll not leave out that door the same way they came in, Lord. Father, I thank you that you're here to provide them with any and everything that they need that you are a loving God, that you are, uh, you are Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee, that you are Jehovah Jireh, you are the God that provides. And I thank you, Lord, that there's no reason why we have to leave empty-handed. All we have to do is just come up and be expecting to get what our needs met, Lord, and know that they will be met and they will be taken care of. So, Father, again, we thank you for the word we thank you for blessing all of us and ask that you continue to bless those that were here tonight and those that are listening. Lord, I pray that you just place a hedge of protection around them, Lord, and just watch over them jealously. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen.